you know, this isn't your war. What are you doing here? This isn't worth fighting and dying for. Uh, remember your girlfriend back home or your wife? Wouldn't you rather be back with her and just, what, and, and did you hear about the great victory? Did you hear about the prisoner who just renounced the United States or a thousand and one? That happened in Korea. But uh, you, you think about a, a thousand and one things, whatever they could come up with, that they would just try to plant seeds of doubt and to undermine the resolve of the American soldiers. But of course, we do the same things, don't we? You know, they'll drop leaflets, they'll do a thousand and one things to try to to convince people to just give up and not fight because that's the battle. I mean, you know, we know what to do most of the time, don't we? Is that usually the problem? You know, we know from the Word what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to live and serve God, but the problem is we get defeated here before we fight. And so we're just, you know, we're, we're sort of, you know, waving our sword a little bit, but it's, it's rather feeble, and we have the sense on the inside, uh, this is not worth it, I can't, you know, I, I'm going to lose, I might as well give in sooner or later, let's just put a good show on for a while, but, you know, I know, I, I know the battle's going to lose, I've always lost, you know. Anybody going through that a little bit in your life? You know, we are, as we've said so many times, we're told to expect warfare in our life, we're told to expect difficulty. In fact, Paul was writing to Timothy, and he said, Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I've had that word come to me many times recently, and I wonder, my God, am I ever, you know, is this ever going to get any easier? And just, Lord, you know, I'm so, I'm so tired, I'm so this, I'm so that. What's going on here? Is it just, isn't there a place where we can kind of get beyond all that? And, uh, I, you know, in a sense there is, but the problem is that when we allow those things to begin to affect us, that's when the battle gets really hard to fight, and that's when we tend to fall in the mud and lose. But I'll tell you, God wants to give us a, a courage this morning and a, and a sense and, and, and put a, you know, change our thinking, change our whole way of looking at things. Now, you know, uh, this is a principle that's well understood in the world. Uh, we're created in the image of God, and and, I, you know, I believe even natural men will talk about, you know, having courage and standing fast and not giving up and that sort of thing. You know, Winston Churchill was, was uh, famous for his bulldog attitude, never give up, never give in. And you can go and hear a lot of uh, motivational speakers, and they'll hammer on this theme. You know, never give up, always, you know, and they'll give you, they'll try to inspire you with examples of people who are facing over insurmountable odds, and they... They rose up and they just gave it all they had and suddenly they broke through and they were victorious and now they're rich and wealthy and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, you can go a lot of places today and that's how this concept will get applied. To, it's to natural things. It's to earthly goals. It's, uh, you know, follow your dreams and don't give up kind of thing as though God's, design, God's aim in life is to fulfill our dreams. If only we will adopt the principles you find in this book. Well, uh, I think you know better than that, don't you? That that's not what it's about. Uh, God isn't here to fulfill our dreams. He has his own. He has a plan that's so much better than we could ever devise for ourselves. And you know, start, the start of the battle many times is just surrendering to that fact. And coming to God with the attitude, Lord, I lay my dreams at your feet. Lord, lead me in the path of your choosing for me. I want your path. That's the only one in which I can succeed. I understand, Lord, that there will be enemies. There will be battles to fight. I'm going to have to go into enemy territory, and I'm going to have to be willing to pick up a sword, but I want to be on your path because I know when I'm on your path, you will be with me. You will never leave me. You will never forsake me. But you know, as I said uh, with Joshua, it was uh, the Lord understood that even though he was giving Joshua all these wonderful promises over and over and over and over again, he reinforces the idea, don't you give up. Don't you back down because I'm going to be with you. You know, I started to say uh, you have the motivational speakers, but what are they really appealing to? I mean, they're appealing to human desires, I know, but in terms of the resources by which we draw courage, where, do, you know, where does that come from? It comes from us. That's exactly right. And so what that does is 
basically make a, make a, a difference between people because there are people who, like, uh, like Churchill, have a natural bulldog attitude. They're gonna, they have a can-do spirit. They're going to be able to do any, everything that you put in front of them. They're, not, they're never going to give up. They're stubborn. And there, you got other people who just, you know, they, they look like targets. <laughs> oh, well, the deer in headlights, you know, that's how they look at life. It's just, I, I'm, I, there's nothing I can, it doesn't matter what I do, I'm going to lose. But you've got a difference in people, and you can only inspire people so much. But I'll tell you, in serving God, we are in territory where we cannot succeed with human strength. This is not a natural battle. It is not a natural war. It is a supernatural battle. And many of you could testify the Lord has a way of putting you in a place where your strength is gone. I mean, how many of you have been there? Yeah. You're, you didn't have any more strength. It wasn't a matter of just trying to dig down deep and find a reserve there somewhere. The reserve was gone. And the only thing you could do was to lift up your heart and say, oh, God, help me. Did he? Yeah. Yes, he did. See, that's, that's part of, that, that is so integral to serving God. But, you know, it's something that we need to be reminded of continually because we do suffer under the effects of Satan's psychological warfare. And it makes all the difference. Look at the battle that Joshua was called to fight. God was here building him up, encouraging him, saying, I'm with you. And, you know, later on he met this, uh, this angelic being who said, I'm, as, I'm here as captain of the Lord's host. I'm going, I'm, you know, I'm going forward. And uh, so he realized that there was a supernatural component to this war. It wasn't just a bunch of ragtag Israelites against a bunch of giants who were skilled swordsmen. God was with them. And... You know, God's, a, God's the greatest psychological warrior there is. You know, when they went to Jer Jericho, how do the Jericho, how do the folks from Jericho feel about the, all this? You know, when, they, when the spies went and they talked to uh, Rahab, uh, Rahab was, you know, told them, said, look, we're, we are in dread of you. We have heard what God did for you, and everybody's heart is just, they're, they're, they've already given up. They're, they're already in defeat in their minds. So as for all practical purposes, the war is over here. And so they were able to go back and, and realize God was building up their confidence 